So there was a couple of reasons why I decided to go live with this one. Uh, for number one, I, I actually been meaning to make this video for quite some time, and uh, just been kind of putting it off on the back burner. Um, woke up this morning, and here's number two reason why I decided to do that. Um, woke up this morning, I got this email. It was an email from YouTube, and uh, it was saying that uh, some of my content had violated uh, community standards and that I got a strike. And then there was a link, and it prompted me to um, click on the link and then log in with my YouTube information and all that, right? So I checked that email and then um I type in the source it was some spam email and then um let me see on top of that the email that they sent that message to that's not the email that I used to connect to YouTube so I knew it was a fake so I thinks to myself self somebody out there is so triggered about the content that you make that they would take the time out to design this well-crafted email just to give you a hard time and discourage you from producing more content. So then I said to myself, well, let's get up and go make some content then. And I hope that the uh, hater is sitting there in the chat or maybe watching this video a little bit later and understand that they have actually given me incentive to go live with this information. I was just gonna chill today. I was just gonna relax, do some cleaning, you know, just relax, keep it to myself. But no, since they wanna mess with me, I guess I'll mess with you back. So, right about now, we have a few reasons to stay away from McDonald's. Titled the video, uh, Reasons to Avoid the Golden Arches. Like I said, um, this isn't, isn't for, um, the seasoned veterans, you probably already know some of this stuff. Some of this will be old news. Some of this might be new to you. Um, so let's go ahead and get into this. Let me see. Uh, I got a little presentation thing. So, all right. Uh, caca on the kiosks. <laughs> so look. Um, one thing that's happening these days is uh, we're moving towards a society where um, more technology is going to be taking taking jobs. You know, the the lean towards artificial intelligence. You know, like they got drones watching people to make sure they're social distancing these days. Is we're moving to a more automatic society, um, self driving cars, that concept and all. And um, what what happened is people put up a uh, you know, kind of resistance to a fight for $15 um, minimum wage. I mean, it's like a working wage. It makes sense to me. But at the same time, now, um, what companies are going to do if they make it a nationwide $15 an hour minimum wage, I don't think that actually went through. I don't think that's like the baseline um, pay for you know across the country i don't think that that happened but from a business standpoint what they would do is look at that and say okay so i have this many employees that i have to pay on a regular basis 15 dollars an hour if i buy this machine for eighty thousand dollars it's going to pay for itself within a year year and a half so basically it's like an investment they buy these kiosks and the first time i saw this was in las vegas a few years back i went to uh jack in the box this was the first time i had seen that i go to jack in the box and i go in there's nobody at the front counter um, um nobody to um you know take my order and all that and i see this big screen and it's got all these you know it's one of the kiosks where you order all your stuff so i'll sit here and i'm like 
picking out what what meal I want, pick out what kind of drink I want, what sides and all that. And then I pay, I'll swipe my card and all that. And then the order just shoots to the back. And then after a few minutes, somebody comes um, from the back and they, they, they present your food. So it's just basically cooks in the back and then they'll just bring your food forward. I, I thought that was the craziest thing. And this was like over 10 years ago when I saw that. So um, no doubt that the whole automations thing is going to from a business perspective save the company a whole lot of money in the long run because that that kiosk that mechanical kiosk it doesn't have to take a, it, it it doesn't have to call in sick you know what i mean you don't have to um split wages it's it, it it's gonna work it's gonna be able to work every shift unlike a human being so you can get rid of some people and buy that kiosk and you're gonna make a whole lot you're gonna make your money back and it's gonna pay for itself from a business standpoint so um, as far as the McDonald's kiosks go, <laughs> let's check out this article. Um, so let me see, where is this thing at? Uh, yes, here we go. All right. So McDonald's touchscreen kiosks contaminated with fecal bacteria, according to a UK report. All right. And this is from April 1st, 2019. This is from the UK. But if you think about this from a, another perspective, you know, just kind of extrapolate that across the world, because, you know, across the world, people pretty much do some of the same stuff. So anyway, let's this is this is the UK. But check it. Uh, fecal matter on the screens. Uh, let me see a Big Mac hamburger and french fries in London, August 6, 2008. Um, OK. Beware of fast food self-service touchscreens. A report has warned after fecal matter was found on every McDonald's touchscreen kiosk tested during an investigation in the UK. Every McDonald's touchscreen. So every one of them tested positive for fecal matter. The tests were conducted at six McDonald's locations in London and two in Birmingham where screens were swabbed for, t for lab testing. All eight samples were contaminated with... Uh, coliforms a type of bacteria found in human fecal matter the report labeled the results as being potentially enough to put people in the hospital good lord okay and then this is a tweet study finds enough fecal matter on mcdonald's touchscreens to put people in the hospital all right that's that's a reason <laughs> that's the reason moving along the touch screens help to simplify the ordering process for customers who select their meals on screen before heading to the counters to pay and pick up their meal. Um, but all too often, those in contact with the kiosks fail to wash their hands and use uh, hand sanitizer, the report suggested. Now, that wouldn't be so much of an issue now because, you know, everybody's in overkill as far as washing their hands and using hand sanitizer. So, um, you know, that's less of a risk these days. Also, it's more drive through. But this is... This is from 2019, back when we could roam about freely. Uh, in contrast to the report's suggested findings, a McDonald's spokesperson said, Our self-order screens are cleaned frequently throughout the day. That's BS. Uh, all of our restaurants also provide facilities for customers to wash their hands before eating, according to Market Watch. Okay, so there is that. I'm just gonna stop it right there because one of these one of these is actually gonna it's gonna be a minute so because it's gonna be a long list of stuff that we gotta go through so um there you go there you go the um whole aspect of traces of <laughs> fecal matter being found on the screen so um i mean that's that's another one of those things to wonder about um, as so many people are coming through there on a regular basis, like, I mean, you might be on top of your hygiene, wash your hands and all that. That doesn't mean that everybody else is doing the same thing. We also got to continue that it's some, it's some nasty effing people out there. So that's just something to consider. Um, okay. What's that? What else we got? Ah, yes. Is it even real food? Now, you got to ask yourself about these things. Now, it's been points where growing up, 
or maybe even in your adult life where you would go to McDonald's and after a while you would clean out your car right you go clean out your car and in the back seat you know your kids been eating McDonald's and all that and they might have dropped a french fry somewhere so you're cleaning in between the seats and all that you reach down you pick up one of these french fries and it looks like it, it still kind of looks like when you when you bought it for the most part like it just doesn't decompose as if bacteria germs just don't want to break that stuff down like it's not real food so um let's uh check out this here I got do 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 hold up. Uh, there we go. Um trying to find this real quick. Hold up, hold up. Just a sec, just a sec. Yeah, that one. Pull it up. What's good? What's going on? What's going on? Okay. Got to reset this window. All right. There it is. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> okay, no, we're back. All right. So, um just watch this real quick video. This is from the guy that did Super Size Me. Um, you know, along the lines of asking if, if it's real food or not. So, let me turn the volume up on this. Okay. Have you ever wondered what makes McDonald's food taste so good and cost so little? I got my my two sacks of McGoodness right here. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to give you an idea of how this food is breaking down in your body. I'm just going to put it in some jars to kind of show you how it breaks down on its own over time, over the next, you know, four, five, six, seven months. So in here, we've got my favorite right there, the Big Mac. So we're going to put the Big Mac right here in jar number one, Chicken McGrill. So there you go. Boy, let me tell you something to smell this food. I just want to take a bite out of it already. One of the worst things on the whole menu, the filet o fish. Look at that thing. It still looks terrible. Going right in there. Next, quarter pounder. That actually looks like meat. There's the quarter pounder. Some fantastic fries. So we're just going to dump right in this jar. Right there. In that last jar, we're going to get a hamburger from up the street, from a place where they actually make real hamburgers, where they take the patties and they press them with their own hands and put them on the grill. You know, it's like real meat. And lastly, french fries from a regular restaurant. See what happens at the same time. Two weeks later. Two weeks. French fries from a regular restaurant. Two weeks. French fries from a McDonald's restaurant. Two weeks sweaty, moldy burger in there. That burger's all moldy. Flavish, just starting to mold. That's some kind of cheeseburger. And the Big Mac, still nothing. Big Mac hasn't even started to mold yet. Big Mac, still Looks like we just bought that thing. Lettuce, a little moldy. Chicken McGrill, definitely seen some better days. That thing is beat up. Look at that white fuzz on the top of it. The quarter pounder. That thing's got a rainforest going on inside there. This burger, same thing. Look, it's starting to get juicy on the bottom. The bun is just like coagulating into some kind of goo. Here's the regular french fries. Those things are black and crazy. Want to see what the McDonald's french fries look like? Check this out. That's right. Some kind of fluke of nature. That's right. This can't explain. But this is what you're eating every time you get these fries. Okay, so... Um, now notice, notice what happened there with the, um, those McDonald's fries. <sighs> you see how those, like, didn't even decompose like the other fries from the, um, from that other restaurant. Uh, there's a reason for that. 
and um, yeah, I was doing some looking around. I found this. Where is this thing at? Um, uh, Brave browser. There we go. So, what I'd like to show you, what I'd like to show you real quick, the reason why, um why 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 those things lasted so so very long is where's this thing at let me just start up another one boom all right another article i want to show you okay <laughs> did you know that there happened to be over a dozen ingredients in McDonald's french fries have you heard of that did you know that um actually uh you know some people have broken that down so let's let's go through this article this one might take a second so I'll try to try to be quick about it but we're gonna go over these ingredients and what they do so we broke down the 19 ingredients in McDonald's french fries to find out what we're eating so you remember the fries last so long okay one of them is also found in silly putty is what they say right here okay who doesn't love mickey d's fries i mean even just the smell of them makes my stomach growl so what is it about those fries that get the people going is it the potatoes the oil the mad cheap price who knows but one thing we do know is that the ingredient list of for McDonald's French fries is worthy of novel status, and we don't know how to feel about it, so we broke it down for you. Number one, potatoes. Obviously, McDonald's buys 3.4 billion pounds of taters annually. The people really need their French fries. Number two is canola oil. Understandable, French fries. We, I mean, we need oil to fry them in, so canola oil is a good choice. Soybean oil. Okay, not quite sure what we need another oil for, <laughs> but still, uh, three ingredients isn't so bad. Hydrogenated soybean oil. Not gonna lie, I had to look up the definition of hydrogenated, but it means made into a solid fat. So basically, it's the same as number three and seems unneeded. Mm -hmm. Another addition, natural beef flavor. If we wanted natural beef flavor, we would just grab a Big Mac and not a large fry. <laughs> what the F, Mickey D's? Uh, hydro hydrolyzed wheat. Uh-oh, my gluten intolerant friend who lives off French fries will be pretty upset to find this one out. The version of wheat protein could be of concern for those with celiac, uh, celiac disease. Hydrolyzed milk. Number seven, typically found as a form of infant formula. Uh, this type of milk is hypoallergenic. No worries to those lactose intolerance. But why is this necessary for French fries? That's a good, good question. Hydrolyzed milk. Citric acid, number eight. Used in more foods than you probably know. This acid is used for flavoring and acidifying agent. So maybe it gives it a salty flavor. We'll let's just let this one slide. It might be citric acid. Mm. Okay. Uh, all right. Here, let's see now. Uh, let me. Dimethyl polysilac uh, siloxane. All right. Dimethyl polysiloxane. There we go. Nailed it. Uh, take a guess what that means. Well, what we do know is that it was it, it's used as a silicone in the manufacturing of silly putty that's the one number nine okay as a component of silly, put, silly putty all right uh dextrose basically this is a sweetening additive but last time i checked french fries aren't sweet they're not supposed to be anyway sodium acid acid pyrophosphate but they showed a picture of the potatoes here like that's actually what it is. Anyway, this guy is responsible for preventing discoloration of the potatoes while they are being shipped across the world. Without it, your meal would be a little less appetizing, so this is understandable. Hmm. Salt, number 12. 100% uh, necessary and essential. End of story. <laughs> These people are nuts. Canola oil. Uh, here's where we get annoying. 
canola oil. I thought we had canola oil. And wasn't that canola oil on the list already? Hold up. Yeah, number two. See, they, look, they're doing too much. All right. Got to write the editor on this one. Uh, yes, I realized this was already said. Oh, okay. And no, this is not a mistake. Mid McDonald's fries freezes and refries these taters. So three ingredients are used twice. So maybe technically it's 16 ingredients, but I'm calling BS. Corn oil. More oil. Another oil. You have to be kidding. Uh, this can't be necessary. Soybean oil. Seriously, another oil. These fries are one part potatoes and seven parts oil at this point. There has to be another way. <laughs> Hydrogenated soybean oil. Again, a solid fat turner, uh, a solid fat turned version of soybean oil. That soybean times four in Mickey D's fries. Let me know why. Uh, TBHQ. Now, I kind of feel like you might want to look up something on TBHQ. I feel like I've heard about this again, but but here, let's look at this TBH. I don't know what TBHQ is. That was pretty good. To be honest, I don't know what TBHQ is, but further research tells me it's a food additive that presents it from oxidizing, which makes it lose flavor. High doses of TBHQ are toxic, but no worries. The little amount used in your fries won't harm a fly. The FDA allows this, by the way. The, the same FDA that's really, um, you know, really, really down for us in the way and means of keeping us healthy, you know, as far as our food intake. Citric acid, again, more citric acid. Why, just why is that necessary? <laughs> this person, oh yeah, and then there's this one again, uh, dimethyl polysiloxane. Um, again with this, so, all right, and here we go again with the silicone additive found in Silly Putty wasn't good enough or gross us out at once but so there you have 19 well 16 if you add if you want to be picky so that's a lot going on as far as the fries and i mean it's mostly mostly oil and uh whatever yeah it's potatoes drenched in oil acid and whatever that is to make silly putty so that's what's up with that one uh, yeah all right, so we were asking, is it even real food? Um, it's hard to tell. I'm going to go with no. But um, that was the uh, chemically extended shelf life right there because all those ingredients are in that thing. I'm getting ahead of myself with the slideshow. I do what I can, though. So, yeah, um, all those all those ingredients being added, that's, that's what causes... Um, some other health problems i mean lord knows what else could be the issue conserving uh or uh concerning you know what what detriment is brought up to people's health just consuming the fries but um i would say if you're gonna do fries something like that you can you can do your own um i mean i i, I do my own i got like a regular potato here i'll just cut this thing up um, throw some some butter on it, maybe some oil, even um, vegetable oil or uh, coconut oil. Um, I'll take some Mrs. Dash seasoning, uh, chop it up, throw that in a new wave oven for like 20 minutes, and it's good. It's a regular potato, so I like do my own uh, when I can anyway. So, um... All right, let's move on to the darker stuff. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Did you say horse meat? Yeah. Horse meat. So, there was investigation done in some of these McDonald's factories uh, years back. And uh, apparently the investigators were said to have found, discovered, horse meat. So gonna look into this whole situation and uh, right about now hold on let me get this screen together starting to figure out this whole thing in OBS too it's 
good times. Okay. Uh, yep. All right, and go. Okay, so. The question is, what's behind the horse meat contamination scandal? Let's read up on this a little bit. Horse, pig, meat found in frozen burgers. There's a two-minute video about this. We're just going to skip that one. Because we're going to get into another video in a minute. Um, says horse meat has been discovered in products labeled as 100% beef and sold in Sweden, uh, the UK, and France. Food authorities in those countries have launched investigations, but the supply chain being studied in includes still more countries. We look at the implications. How did the presence of horse meat come to light? In January, the Food and Safety uh, Authority of Ireland found that 10 out of 27 hamburger products it analyzed in a study contained horse meat or a horse DNA, while 23 of them tested positive for pig DNA. Jeez, pig DNA. Um, in one sample from Tesco, Britain's largest grocery chain, the horse meat ca accounted for about 29% of the burger. So almost a third of that thing is horse meat. It's what they found there. Well, on Monday, February 4th, Swedish food producer Fendis withdrew its frozen lasagna labeled as the British spelling lasagna. Sure. Um, from British stores as a precaution after its French supplier, Comigel, sure, uh, raised concerns about the type of meat used. On Wednesday, February 6th, tests confirmed that horse meat was presented in a number of samples. Horse meat. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. The next day, Britain's Food Standards Agency, FSA, confirmed that meat Con meat content of beef beef lasagne products recalled by Fendis has tested positive for more than 60% horse meat. Fendis said a letter from Comagel um, dated February 2nd suggested the contamination might backdate to August 2012. Then on Friday, February 8th, two days later, retailer Aldi withdrew two products, today's special frozen beef lasagna and today's special frozen spaghetti bolognese, <laughs> good lord, after they were found to contain between 30% and 100% horse meat. 30% and 100% horse meat. Good night. Uh, let me see. Let's go down here. Which other countries are affected? Uh, AFP has reported that Common Jail supply products to customers in 16 countries. Fendis France has temporarily withdrawn three ready prepared dishes lasagna, bolognese, shepherd's pie, and moussaka because of the discovery of the horse meat in the products that should be 100% beef. Okay, so. Um, this also came out, let me see, this isn't relating to McDonald's, it's not saying anything about McDonald's, but, there's another situation, uh, concerning McDonald's that I'd like to get into it with you. Um, I mean, it could start at horse meat, but it actually gets a little bit worse, because, um, other investigations were conducted that found whole different situation going on and uh we'll just um reflect on the idea of how many children go missing every year and uh that whole situation it doesn't make the news a whole lot as far as the these kids going missing and you like to think that they would make a bigger deal um being that we're all on lockdown right now uh, do this coronavirus hoax that so many doctors have come out and said that um, there's such a low mortality rate. I mean, they're, they're totally blowing this thing out of proportion. Like, they care about our safety, but like 0.1 to 0.3 mortality is all that we face with this thing. And yet, at the same time, running parallel to that, um, there's 
little to no mention about all the children that go missing on a regular basis. So thinking about that, let's check out this article. Human meat found in McDonald's meat factory. Okay. There's been a lot of controversy in recent years regarding the food served at McDonald's. However, the latest speculation about the meat this famous fast food chain uses exceeds all expectations. A report which contains a shocking audio confession by a man claiming McDonald's uses human meat as a filler in their 100% beef burgers, along with proved, proven facts that McDonald's has been accused of using worm meat fillers, was published recently. So, as far as, as, far as that article goes, we'll just um, get back over here, uh, open this thing up, and... Uh, we're going to listen to this guy um, talking about what he's been saying. So this is Rabbi Abe Finkelstein. And uh, just listen to what he has to say. Real quick, let me turn this up. They keep turning my audio down. Okay. I have a hard time believing anything. Well, we've done a great brainwashing job on them over the centuries. And especially the last few hundred years. I, we just brainwash them completely. They believe anything we tell them. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, we have a lot of fun around Passover where we steal the children. And, uh, you know, we, uh, uh, I know you know because I've heard it on your show before. I mean, we steal 100 to 300,000 children a year just here in this country. And we drain the blood and we mix it with a Passover bread. And then we throw the bodies into the slaughterhouses that we own. And we grind up all the bodies and the sausage and the hamburger. McDonald's is one of our favorite outlets. And uh, the people, they eat them for breakfast. They eat uh, their children for lunch. And, uh, you know, us Jews, you know, we got to uh, we gotta do what we do. The, the, the most important thing to remember between you, Pastor Wickstrom, and me, Rabbi Amy Finkelstein of New York, that... We both have two fathers, and so that's why we look at the world in two different ways. And we know that there's a massive collision that's going to take place between two forces, don't we? Okay. So, yeah. Uh, if you were listening, you heard what the man said there. He was saying that um, what they do is they will take the kidnapped children... To the uh, basement of the synagogues where they do these ritual sacrifices. They'll do the bloodletting ceremonies, cutting the children, terrifying them, doing the, um, you know, adrenochrome extraction, um, drinking their blood with the Passover bread, is what the guy said. And he says, well, we're not cannibals, so we'll just drain the blood from the children's body and then take, send the bodies to these. Uh, meat manufacturing plants and grind the bodies up and send them to to their uh, outlets and he said McDonald's is one of their favorite outlets so me being the simple guy that I am I, I see stuff as uh you know it's 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 one of two things you know, it's either a 50-50 shot of uh, whether you believe this or not, whether you want to see this, see it like this or not. The way I see it, there's a 50-50 chance. You go to McDonald's, you order a burger, there's a 50-50 chance you're eating human meat. If you go to McDonald's for breakfast... There's a 50-50 chance. Now, this guy could be telling the truth. He could be lying. Okay? Um, if he's telling the truth, then, you know, there, there's a there's a pretty good probability that if you go to McDonald's, you might very well be eating some human meat. And, um, I didn't... I didn't want to believe that myself because... I mean, it's no secret, like, most everybody's eating at McDonald's. I did for years and years until I heard this guy talking about that. 
And that was my last time going to McDonald's. And I've, uh, you know, talked to all my friends and loved ones like, yo, don't go to McDonald's. It's not that's not the spot. That is not the place to go. Like, wow, what's up? Look, there's this guy, Rabbi Abe Finkelstein. He came out on this one interview and he was saying that they kidnap kids and drain their blood and send the bodies to the factories and grind the meat up and put it in the burgers and the sausages, man. And I'll just tell them like straight up like that. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, look, I'm going to send you a link to this video, let you listen to it. I've been meaning to make this video for a while. Um, and it's not, it's probably not just McDonald's though. That's the thing. That's the, that's the, that's the main concern. Cause you got to ask yourself, it's, if if it's a hundred percent beef at these places, like where are the cows at? You know, you would expect there to be cows everywhere, cause I mean, you gotta j just just consider how many McDonald's there are all over the place. Like every city, just about every city in the country has a McDonald's restaurant. Every city in every state just about has a mcdonald's i mean seriously so you got to think about that and then extrapolate let's i mean consider how many mcdonald's there are in the world like there i mean other countries for sure you know over in asia over in europe they got mcdonald's too they're they're different you know, they serve different things on the menu, but the main staples are still there. The burgers, the sausage, things like that. So if that, 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 that distribution is still taking place that way, I mean, just the same as KFC, just the same as Popeye's. It's like you don't really know what you're eating. You could be eating some GMO chickens. You could be eating burgers that are actually human meat. They, I mean, they, they tamper with so much stuff, you really just don't know. So... The point of this, this video here, uh, was to just give you some insight as to some of the things that come out, um, you know, in the last few years that you may not have come in contact with. That whole situation with all those ingredients in the fries, I mean, I wondered what the heck the fries were anyway because, you know, like I said, you could have them in the back seat of your car and just be driving around for months and go pick the fries up and the fries still look like the day you bought them, you know. So, I mean, all those all those ingredients that that it, it's just not good for you anyway. But the thing that pushed me over the edge was that whole that that last bullet point, like the possibility that they have. swindled us that they have have lured us that they've uh kind of kind of tricked us into partaking in cannibalism possibly possibly let's be honest with ourselves you've been to mcdonald's you've had the breakfast sandwiches you've you've eaten the sausages you've eaten the burgers the idea that they have possibly coerced us uh, without our knowledge into partaking in cannibalism that is sick so that's all i got for this one i just want you to think about think about that um if you found this to be good information um then by all means give give us a thumbs up that helps with the uh getting around the algorithms if you think this is good information for any of your friends that have um been at mcdonald's lately or uh you know that they frequent this place and you think this information might help them then by all means share this video with them or somebody else's at the same time it's just this is stuff that needs to be taken care of, things that need to be discussed. And uh, that's kind of a tough pill to swallow. Uh, the You know, coming to grips with that, that realization that you may have very well participated uh, against your knowledge. We may have very well participated against our knowledge. So, moving forward, moving forward, uh, 
yeah, let's stay away from McDonald's. All right. Uh, so let me see. I got. Let me hop in the chat. Say what's up, y'all, man. I appreciate you all for uh, coming to hang out very briefly on this Sunday morning. Um, let me see. And that concludes our presentation portion. We appreciate the likes on the video because they do help. They certainly do with the uh, algorithms because we get a good, good amount of censorship for trying to spread the truth out here. Uh, special shout out to Isaiah4022. Appreciate that super chat. Says, buy yourself a Philly cheesesteak. It's made with brotherly, lo brotherly love. Philly cheesesteaks are delicious, by the way. Um, but yeah, so go ahead and uh, get ready to cut this thing off. I appreciate you all. Um, by all means, like I said, uh, you know, hit a like, um, share this thing. Um, yeah, and uh, I I'll say have a enjoy your day. We might go live later. No telling. All right. So I'm saying good, good day to... Ye Unit, Eddie Machete, Sigma V, my man Rich Lopez in the house, Mark Collard, Isaiah Smith, Kanga Kong, what's happening? J9 Ya, Charles O'Connor, Aaron Rocha, what's up? Tootie Pootie, <laughs> Amanda Clayton, uh, Slingshot Art, what's happening? Michael Kilpatrick, Allah Moon God, okay. Fusion Density, what's up, what's up? Larry Parks. Uh, Brian Grizzly, Brian Stavely in the house, Anthony Dickinson, University of Truth, what's up, Mike O, Brian Grizzly, thanks for sharing, appreciate you, Robbie D, Clouds Behind the Sun, sometimes, Jason Best, what's up, man, um, Eric McAllister, Clouds Behind the Sun, alright, appreciate you all, and uh, thanks again, Isaiah4022, alright, everybody, you all have a great day, as always, be good with each other, take care of